In the last lecture, we derived the formula to calculate the space complexity of recursive algorithms. Now in this lecture, we will try to analyze the space complexity of factorial of n algorithm. This is the famous recursive algorithm and finding the space complexity of this algorithm will help us understand how to find the space complexity of any recursive algorithm. So let's get started with this lecture and let's see the topics. The first topic of this lecture is factorial of a number. First, we will understand how to find the factorial of a number. We will understand the concept of factorial of a number. After understanding this topic, we will move to this topic, space complexity of factorial of n, where we will understand how to find the space complexity of factorial of n algorithm. So, let's start with the first topic, factorial of a number. So, what is factorial of a number? The factorial of a number is the product of all positive integers less than or equal to the number. In order to find the factorial of a number, we need to take the product of all the positive integers which are less than or equal to the given number. So, in order to find n factorial, we need to multiply n by n minus 1 then we need to multiply it by n minus 2 and it will continue up to 1. So, in this way we can calculate n factorial. From this formula, we can also observe that n factorial is equal to n times n minus 1 factorial because n minus 1 factorial can be written as n minus 1 times n minus 2 and so on up to 1. In the same way, we are writing the formula for n factorial. So, n factorial is same as n times n minus 1 factorial. So, I hope this formula is clear. This helps us in calculating the factorial of n. And why I am writing this formula? Because this will help us writing the recursive program to calculate factorial of a number. From this, we can observe that in order to find the factorial of n, we need to find the factorial of n minus 1. If we know what is factorial of n minus 1, we can multiply it by n and this will give us n factorial. So, in this way, we can find n factorial. And this is the logic we will use to write our recursive algorithm to find the factorial of a number. First, we will write the recursive program and then we will convert that to its equivalent algorithm. Now, let's see a simple example of factorial of a number. Let's say we are interested in finding 5 factorial. If we apply this formula, 5 factorial is same as 5 times 5 minus 1, which is 4, times 5 minus 2, which is 3, times 5 minus 3, which is 2, times 5 minus 4, which is 1. We need to stop at 1. So, 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And this is equal to 120. So, 5 factorial is equal to 120, which is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. I hope now it is clear what is factorial of a number and how to find factorial of any number. Now, we are ready to understand how to find the space complexity of factorial of n. Now, how do we find the space complexity of factorial of n? In order to find the space complexity of factorial of n, we first need to write the recursive program of factorial of n and then we will convert it to its equivalent algorithm because we are not interested in the implementation. We want to find the space complexity of factorial of n. First, we will write the recursive program because it is easier for us to write. Then we will convert it to its equivalent algorithm. Here is the program to calculate the factorial of n. This is the recursive function to calculate the factorial of n. Here I have mentioned the name fact which is short for factorial and within this function the parameter that is provided is n. This factorial function will calculate the factorial of n. The return type I have mentioned here is long long because even for small sized inputs the result of factorial is usually very large and hence the return type is long long. Now, we can see within this factorial function, we have the base case and the recursive case. 
I'm assuming that you are already familiar about how to write a recursive program. A recursive program consists of two things. One is the base case and the other one is recursive case. Base case is the termination criteria of the recursive program. It eventually helps terminating the recursive program. And the recursive case is where the recursion happens. This is the base case because it is easy to calculate. Here we have if n equal to 1, then return 1. If we are interested in finding the factorial of 1, then we must return 1 from the function because fact of 1 is 1. So, this base case is helping us to terminate this function. If we encounter n as 1, then we will immediately return 1 from this function. Now, what is the recursive case? The recursive case is this else block. Within this else block, we have the statement to return n times fact of n minus 1. We are calling fact of n minus 1 here and we are multiplying it by n. I have obtained this from the formula n factorial equal to n times n minus 1 factorial. Recall, this is the formula we obtained just now. n factorial is same as multiplying n by n minus 1 factorial. If we somehow know what is n minus 1 factorial, then we can multiply it by n to obtain the final result which is n factorial. This is the reason I am returning n times fact of n minus 1 from this function because this is the final result. Here we can observe that we are recursively calling fact function and this time we are passing n minus 1. So when this function is called for the first time, then we pass the value of n to it and the next time what happens is n minus 1 is passed to this function and fact of n minus 1 will be calculated, then fact of n minus 2 will be calculated and the process continues until we encounter n equal to 1. If n is equal to 1, then 1 will be returned from the function. And in this way, we would be able to calculate the factorial of any number that we want to calculate. This function will work correctly and this function is written in C programming language. Now, let's convert this function to its equivalent algorithm because we are not interested in the implementation of this function. We want to analyze our algorithm so that eventually we would be able to know what is the space complexity of factorial of n. Let's convert this function to its equivalent algorithm. This is how the algorithm looks like. This algorithm is written in C-like syntax, but this is not exactly the C program. Here I have mentioned ELGO to indicate that this is not a C program but an algorithm. And here I have written the algorithm in C-like syntax for better understanding. Here we have fact of n instead of fact of int n. And within this we have if n equal to 1, return 1. This is the base case. And the recursive case is else return n times fact of n minus 1. Now let's analyze this algorithm. We want to find the space complexity of this algorithm. We learned in the last lecture that space complexity of a recursive algorithm is same as space for the data structures used plus depth of recursion. Here we are not using any complex data structure. We are using a simple variable n. So clearly we can eliminate space for the data structures used and we are left with depth of recursion. So clearly space complexity of this recursive algorithm is equal to the depth of the recursion. But we need to mention space complexity in terms of asymptotic notation. Therefore, space complexity of this algorithm is same as theta of depth of recursion. Why I have mentioned theta here? It can be theta, it can be big O, it can be big omega. It depends. But for now, let's assume this is theta. Later, we will change this to some other notation if we feel the need to do this. So, space complexity is theta of depth of recursion. This is the default notation we are using to represent the space complexity. Now, let's find the space complexity of this algorithm by finding the depth of recursion of this algorithm. Let's do this now. We learned this in the last lecture, how to find the depth of recursion. We need to draw the tree, remember? From the tree, we can find the depth easily. 
and this will give the space complexity of the algorithm. In order to draw the tree, let's take some value of n. Let us assume n is equal to 3. So, for the first time, we are calling fact of 3. Now we know at this point, n is equal to 3. This condition is not satisfied. Hence, we will land at the else block. This means the recursive case will be executed. Now, within this recursive case, we need to return n times fact of n minus 1. The final value will be returned once fact of n minus 1 will be resolved. This means, once we obtain the value of fact of n minus 1, then only we would be able to return the final result. So, first we need to find what is fact of n minus 1. We know the value of n at this point is 3. So, this will be replaced by 2. And this means from fact of 3, we now need to call fact of 2. Alongside, for the sake of understanding, let's create the call stack also. And as fact 3 is called, let's push the activation record of fact 3 within the call stack. Now we can see the top of the stack is fact 3. This means we are right now in fact 3. We know we need to call fact of 2 from fact of 3. Therefore, the control will shift from fact of 3 to fact of 2. And now the activation record of fact of 2 goes inside the stack. The top of the stack at this moment is fact of 2. And we can observe the value of n at this moment is 2. We know 2 is not equal to 1. Therefore, the base condition is not satisfied. Hence, the else block will be executed. Within this else block, we need to return n times fact of n minus 1. Again, we need to call fact of n minus 1. What is n at this point? n is equal to 2. Therefore, it will be replaced by 2. And 2 minus 1 is 1. Therefore, fact of 1 needs to be called. So, control will shift from fact of 2 to fact of 1. And now, the activation record of fact of 1 goes inside the stack. This is the top of the stack. And this means we are right now within fact of 1. The value of n is 1 at this moment. Therefore, the base condition is true. Hence, return 1 will be executed. And this means we now need to return 1 from fact of 1 to fact of 2. As we have returned 1 from fact of 1, the activation record of fact of 1 will go outside the stack and now we are within fact of 2. We know at this point n is equal to 2, therefore this n will be replaced by 2 and fact of n minus 1 will be replaced by this return value which is 1 because this is the place where we left off and hence the value which is returned from fact of 1 will be returned here. So fact of n minus 1 will be replaced by 1 and n will be replaced by 2. So, 2 times 1 is equal to 2. Now, we need to return 2 from fact of 2 to the caller of fact of 2, which is fact of 3. So, let's return 2 from here to here. Now, fact of 3 has received value 2. And this value is received over here. So, fact of n minus 1 will be replaced by 2. And the activation record of fact of 2 will go outside the stack. We can observe here that n is equal to 3. Therefore, this n will be replaced by 3. And 3 times 2 is equal to 6. So, 6 will be returned from fact of 3. And this will be returned to the caller of fact of 3. Maybe the main function. And as we are returning, the activation record of fact of 3 will go outside the call stack. And at this moment, we can observe the call stack is empty. This means we are done with the execution. Now we can observe the tree here. What do you think? What is the depth of this tree? Clearly, we can observe that there are three levels. So, the depth of this tree is 3. This 3 indicates the depth of recursion or we can say the depth of function calls. Depth is equal to 3. Hence, we can say for three function calls, the depth is 3. It is clear for three function calls, depth is 3. For 4 function calls, depth will be 4. For 10 function calls, depth will be 10. It can be observed clearly because from fact of n, we are calling fact of n minus 1. Then we are calling fact of n minus 2. It will proceed in a linear fashion. And hence, the depth is equal to the number of function calls. 
So for three function calls, depth is three. For n function calls, the depth is n, and that's what we want. The depth of recursion is n for this algorithm. Hence, we can say the space complexity is theta of n. We can write theta of n because this is the amount of space needed for both best and worst case. The space complexity depends on the input size, which is n. If n is 3, the highest number of activation records at a time will be 3. If n is 5, the highest number of activation records within the stack will be 5. If n is 100, the highest number of activation records at a specific point of time will be 100. So clearly, space complexity depends on the input size and hence we are writing theta of n. We can write big O of n here to represent worst case space complexity. But theta is the better choice because it represents both best and worst case. Both best and worst case space complexity of this algorithm is n. Minimum to minimum, it will take n space. And maximum also, it will take n space. So clearly, this is the space complexity of factorial of n. Now we have calculated the space complexity. And you might have this question in mind that why I have written the algorithm? Why can't we directly analyze the program? We can directly analyze the program, there is no problem. But in the program, we need to worry about a lot of things. We need to worry about the data types. We need to worry about the proper syntax. As we are not interested in the implementation, we do not have to worry about writing the exact program. Instead, it is better to write the algorithm. In algorithm, we do not have to worry about the syntax. We can just mention the important things and accordingly we can analyze its space complexity. So it is better to write the algorithm than the program. So I hope the idea is clear. And with this, we learned how to find the space complexity of factorial of n. And this means we are done with this topic and we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.